Give us a picture just shortly uh, of how bad it was when you took over NASDAQ because it was not pretty. It, it wasn't pretty in that the rules had changed and we had upstart competitors uh, that were called uh, ECNs and they were taking our market share every day. And NASDAQ had built a great system. They changed it once a year. It was very reliable. Uh, the upstarts had rickety systems would break, but they would change and improve it every day a week. And so NASDAQ had built the system for a different time and place, and we had to change the culture and, and respond to it. And part of the complication was NASDAQ had been part of the regulator, and my job was to separate from the regulator, and we had a culture associated with being part of the regulator. Well, and we had employees who chose to work for a regulator. So talk about that culture, because it's so important. As we always hear, culture eats strategy for breakfast, right? Every day. How did you change the culture? Because that's easier said than done. Well, the first thing I did is make dramatic moves in the first day. So I eliminated any conversation of what the culture should be. Uh, I didn't have the time to get into any long debates. It was not uh, something, let's come to a collective decision. I came there with my entrepreneurial background. I said, this is what we're going to become, and there's no, no discussion. So we had a lot of people self-select to leave, right? And I said, you know, if you don't want to be here, where it's a meritocracy, where we're going to weigh, measure, and count everything, where we'll, results will matter, then leave. Right? You'll be happier somewhere else. It's not a value judgment of what life you choose to live. So we had a lot of that happening. And then we had to move the pieces around. And what was great is you found a lot of great employees uh, in, in that kind of old culture, led by obviously Adina, who's now the CEO, who quickly said, this is a better way. And she took to it like a duck to water. Yeah, he'll come back toward the end of the story, actually. Yeah, but, you know. but he also made a lot of acquisitions, quite a few acquisitions, including of one of those ECNs, one of those competitors yeah. on Long Island. Yeah, I had founded one uh, before I'd come to NASDAQ. We acquired that one first, but the most important move we made is to buy INET because we got the best technology on the street. And a lot of the high frequency firms use some version of INET today. So we gained market share in INET. When I think about the 47 acquisitions we did, the only one that we had to do, independent of the price, was INET because we were at institutional risk. We were losing market share every day, we were losing money every day, and we didn't have in-house any technology on the shelf that had been proven that had great faith in it. So that one we had to do. The rest of the acquisitions were optional, and we were really using that to take strength and build upon further strength. So, so you took NASDAQ and your stock price was going on nicely, and then 2008 happened. Yeah, that was uh, a It put some time. stress on everybody, including you, to be able to, uh, on the systems, basically, to clear all the trades that were coming through. But then there were reforms afterwards, and in your book you recount a situation where Jamie Dimon, the head of J.P. Morgan, called you up in not altogether a friendly way. Well, there's some four-letter words there, but I, I would say this. One, uh, our systems worked well through the great credit crisis. We were hitting volumes we only saw in the lab, so that was nerve-wracking. We bent, but we didn't break. Then we had the lobbying for what the future sh should be, and it was a professional you know, disagreement in terms of how would, things would play out. One thing I would have to say with, uh, with Jamie, we lived through some difficult times with Facebook, and to his credit, he gave me a call during some of our darkest post-Facebook days and said, Bob, Bob, you know, you'll get through it, it'll work out, and I appreciate that. Well, talk about that Facebook problem, because it was pretty yeah. well known, and it's treated in the book fairly directly. Yes. Where I, I think probably I would say as a non-engineer, your engineers sort of got ahead of you. Yeah, I, I, this, I, I see it's a really big loop. So I came there and we had a certain culture, we changed it, and we made the engineers really the king of the ship. And the organization was not balanced. So I did my self-reflection. I said it was my issue because I created a culture where the engineers could overdevelop systems without any check from the people running the businesses. So we had to basically evolve. We learned from it. Uh, we became a more balanced organization and a better organization.